Hi guys, Gab here. I'm going to be doing 4.1 for you, which is proving the unique limit of a sequence. And the proof goes like this. We have a sequence A1, A2, up to AM. And we give it to, to a person. We give it to, let's call her Alice. And she tells us it converges to A. And then we take that sequence and we give it to somebody else, who for lack of originality we'll call Bob. And he tells us also correctly that it converges to B. Now we have to prove that A is equal to B, since the limit of a sequence is unique. A sequence has at most only one limit, using the triangle inequality and the precise definition of the limit of a sequence. Just to remind you, the triangle inequality is this, very simple, we've used it before. And the definition of the limit of a sequence is, if you have a sequence AN that converges to L, we say that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some big N that is a natural number, such that for all little n greater than that n, the big N, then a n minus L is less than epsilon. And we'll get back to that later. Now, to prove that A is equal to B, in analysis, the best way to prove that two things are equal is to prove that their difference is zero. And when we do this, we, we, we do this for for our strategy because we want to apply the triangle inequality, we, we can add and subtract the same term and it's still going to be the same thing and then we can apply the triangle inequality and it's going to help us prove what we're trying to do here. We add, suppose we add and subtract a n minus b here. Now if we apply the triangle inequality that's the same as saying a minus a n plus a n minus b, right? Now, because this is the absolute value, I can just switch these two here, no problem. It's still the same thing. We're just taking their difference, the absolute difference. And now, as you can see, this is very similar to the definition we have here of a sequence. I'm going to be able to apply this later on to prove that because these two sequences converge, this also, this can, this can also have the same definition of the limit of a sequence. So, without talking too much about it, let's, let's just do the, the work. Let's, let's apply the definition of the limit of a sequence to each of these uh, sequences. So, for the first one, for Alice's analysis, we'll say for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some N N1, let's call it N1, just to differentiate. And that's a member of the natural numbers, such that for all little n greater than N1, this is true. A n minus A is less than epsilon. And we're going to say epsilon over 2, because later on we're going to add these two terms and we want them to be equal to, to epsilon. So this is, uh, this is part of our tactic. So for the second one, for Bob's analysis, we say the same definition, just we're going to change the n1 there. For all epsilon greater than 0, there exists some n2 member of the natural numbers, such that for all little n greater than n2, then this is true, a n minus b is less than epsilon over 2. And now as you can see, if, if we apply these two to here, we can just add them and it's going to give us just epsilon, right? Now we can't do that quite yet because this is only true if these two are true at the same time. And the way we can combine them is by setting a third, a third index, let's call it n, just n, and let's say that n is the max of n1 and n2. Now we can apply the definition of this limit of a sequence again, and we say for all epsilon, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some n that is a natural number, such that for all little n greater than n then a minus b is less than epsilon. And that's true, because 
we know that a minus b is equal to that, we just use the triangle inequality, a n minus a plus a n minus b, and that's just epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is equal to epsilon. So we just proved here that a minus b is less than epsilon. And how, how does that tell us that a minus b is equal to 0? Well, <laughs> we're saying epsilon is, can be any positive number. I can just make epsilon as small as I want. I can put 3,000 zeros here and then a 1. Okay? And that's still going to be a positive number. But it's so close to 0, and it's still less than their difference. There's only one conclusion. A minus B is 0. Which means A is equal to B. And we're done our proof. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching.